Hi, uh, the last decade, we've seen an explosion of data within the realm of patients having ER positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer. The biggest advancement has been the introduction of CDK4-6 inhibitors plus endocrine therapy that has not only improved progression-free survival, but overall survival of our patients. The real question is what to do next from integration of molecular profiling to identify those novel biomarkers to the introduction of novel agents to target those novel biomarkers. So this year at the APGCS, we had a Menorini stem line satellite symposium that specifically addressed what to do next after the use of a CDK4-6 inhibitor plus endocrine therapy in our patients with hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer. Endocrine therapy with CDK4-6 inhibition is a standard approach to the vast majority of patients with hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative advanced breast cancer. Guidelines recommend sequential use of endocrine therapies and to exhaust uh, endocrine therapies before moving on to cytotoxic therapies. One of the challenges in treating with sequential endocrine therapy is the issue of resistance, both acquired and intrinsic. Therapeutic options in the second line and beyond are aromatase inhibitor therapy as monotherapy, fulvestrin as monotherapy, and then combinations that um, target PIK3CA, AKT, P10 pathways, and others. PIK3CA, AKT, mTOR-based strategies are not uh, particularly efficacious in patients who have prior CDK4-6 inhibitor and ESR1 mutations. Elastran is the first oral cert approved to treat those patients with ER positive head to negative disease after treatment with CDK4 and 6 based therapy. I think that the treatment should be based on two aspects the patient profiling, how the patients behave on the previous treatment, and also the biology. And here we have two key uh, mutations that should be taken into account PIK3CA and AKT, and the ESR1 mutations. For this last group of patients, Elastran has been approved based on the MRI study, showing that Elastran is superior to standard of care. Has a ratio for the mutant uh, population was 0.55. Very interestingly, for those patients who were on treatment for at least a year or more, CDK4 and 6 inhibitors plus amyloid inhibitors, the median PFS exceeds uh, 8.6 months. It is regardless, the pig cliche mutations, the HER2 status, HER2 zero or HER2 low, regardless the visceral or not metastasis, etc., etc. Also, it's very important to consider the toxicity profile. Grade four events were not uh, present in that trial, and grade three adverse events were minimal. So, in our opinion, based on all this data, also considering the toxicity profile with a very, very low number of patients experiencing grade three adverse events, no grade four, Elastran should be considered one of the preferred options to treat this patient population. In addition, it is true that we have more oral search which are upcoming. One of them, immune strand, has also shown a very important improvement in progression-free survival based on the Ember 3 results with toxicity profile, which is very well known, even when we combine with RMR cycle. ESR1 mutations are a resistance phenomenon. So they occur during the course of the disease under endocrine therapy pressure. So we have to monitor them during treatment because they can go up to 40% at third line therapy in metastatic breast cancer. So a tissue biopsy is not the best um, uh, way to look at those ESR1 mutation because we can miss uh, the tumor heterogeneity. That's why liquid biopsy is the preferred option for uh, looking at those uh, uh, mutations. And really, what is important is not going back to the archival breast tissue, because in early breast cancer, or, uh, endocrine therapy naive, the occurrence of ESR1 mutation is null or less than 1%. So it's really something we have to look at during therapy, and it's uh, starting with uh, um, adjuvant therapy. Sometimes it's like 5%. After the first line therapy with CD4-6 inhibitors, it's around 30%. And after the, the, um, the end of the second line, it's around 40%.
So test the patient. If the first liquid biopsy is negative, you have to retest your patient uh, uh, later on because it is really a phenomenon that is acquired during endocrine therapy.